Good morning, Vikings fans. This is Morning Joes, brought to you by the good people at Manscaped. Manscaped was nice enough to send each and every one of our podcast hosts a little grab grab bag, grab box. I just can't do that anymore unless you're the president. Um, a box of goodies. Wow. Which... Uh, we really appreciate all sorts of fun stuff that I've been trying out. Uh, that razor's really nice. Nice t-shirt. Uh, things I didn't realize existed that, or t- needed to exist <laughs> outside of the days when I used to maybe play hockey in high school. Uh, some, some Every guy needs some ball to- toner, whatever that means. Um, yes. Yes, I, I guess. Yes. <laughs> There's a market for it. There was a gap in the market. They swung right in. Uh, but go to manscaped.com. Use the promo code Morning Joes, all one word, Morning Joes. And uh, you get 20% off your next order from Manscaped. Um, speaking of balls, how about the Vikings? Uh, uh, are you asking me? Well, well, first of all, that that's Joe Oberly. Um, he, he he everyone knows Joe. He's been on the show forever. Local legend. He's one of the morning Joes. Ah, oh my God! I just talked to myself of myself in third person. I've got to end this now. I've I've got to leave the podcast. I've <laughs> done that cardinal rule of referring to myself in the third person. Man, I think that's like that's when you hit second gear, in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, uh, I was telling you off air. I said, you know, I, I'm not writing about them this year, and I'm, you know, uh, certainly following the Vikings. And I, I, I took a kind of a uh, more of a fan perspective into my viewing. I had a couple buddies come in from out of town, some high school buddies, and they're down in their purple jerseys and such. And and uh, uh, we had we had fun, and we got into it, and we, you know. It was a fun game to watch from a fan standpoint because there's plenty of scoring, plenty of uh, action, plenty of of drama, and uh, you know we come to the end of the game, and, and in so many NFL games it's this way: you battle back and forth for for six, uh, most of 60 minutes, and you come down with a minute and 40 left, and which is plenty of time to get in position for a field goal, and you actually start. First and or first and ten at, at your own forty. That's not a long ways to go at this point when the defenses are tired to to uh, go up and get a Dan Bailey field goal. And boy, whatever was inflated in the balloon of our viewing was deflated and done at that point. That was as as unsatisfying a final drive I think as you can imagine or ever have seen even for the Vikings. So that, that was pretty disappointing. It's from a fan standpoint of view. Very, very much so. Who do you blame that last drive on? Um, you know, I was, I was going to go back and uh, look at it again to, to determine that I did not, but because I got up like a fan, I got up out of my chair and walked away and said, okay, you know, uh, there's other, there's, there's more to life. You guys are here from out of town. Let's go do something. You know, <laughs> it's one of those, those things. Uh, you know, they, certainly there was the snap was over uh, Cousins' head, um, and you know, I, I I know I blame him on some part because that's his job. And Mark Craig had a uh, quite the piece in the Star Tribune this morning about how uh, you should be able to compare uh, Cousins to his other contemporaries contract wise as for quarterbacks and. He said, I saw a stat that, uh, from Phil Mackey that uh, since Cousins came to the Vikings, there have been there's 39 other quarterbacks who have more uh, winning, drive, uh, winning drives than Cousins. Cousins has won in the regular season, and there are, there's 39 other quarterbacks with so more. So every other team plus some of their backups. Right. <laughs> it, it was just – and I, I saw that, and I go, wow, $33 million a year. Yikes. Just wait till it's 45. Um, oh. Yeah, that game was one of the most Vikings things I think I've ever <laughs> been fortunate enough to witness. You know, at one point, the offense is looking so good with Dalvin having the best game of his career. 
And then Justin Jefferson came out of nowhere, which we'll talk about because I have a plate full of curl right here. I'm going to just swallow whole. Um, and you're thinking, even with uh, Samia being a abject liability, man, this is something you can build around. This is something to get excited about. Um, the defense was super depleted, but they were doing well against Derrick Henry, it felt like. It felt like mm-hmm. they were controlling the pace of the game. There were turnovers. You know, Harrison Smith had that turnover. But it didn't matter. I mean, they still Cousins had a terrible it. turnover. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, he did. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what the hell happened on that. Because at first, my first reaction was obviously to defend Cousins and blame Jefferson. But uh, nope, I heard Cousins talk about it last night on his show with, uh, and he had Jefferson on on as a guest. But he just said that he uh, he said that ball was supposed to, you know, he saw that uh, the defensive end was in his line and, and he couldn't pass over him, so he just tried to throw throw it out of bounds. And he said oh. that ball should have been higher and gone further. And it's like, Kirk Cousins, come on. He can't even throw it out of bounds? Yes, my what's, goodness. What's happening? Um, but, yeah, they. it's one of those things where I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to try to cover the team from the least emotional standpoint as possible, which is usually where I write from in the first place which is probably why I haven't written as much the last couple of weeks. Um, but then they rope you back in. Mm-hmm. And then they, for the most part, they're leading the game comfortably. And for the last, what, 15 minutes, they put up 22 <coughs> points and our offense stagnates. But there's just so many things to get frustrated about in, in, in regards to being a Vikings fan, sure. But in that game, you have to think, why weren't they using Dalvin more? I mean, obviously he was having a... Uh, He's he looks amazing. He's like a 175 two yards. He's two steps faster than everybody everybody chasing after him. In the flat, every time they try to take that angle on him, he always beats it and picks up an extra 10 yards. Yes, that was fun to see. But then you have to wonder. <clears throat> and I know they explained this during the game as well. They didn't want to overwhelm him. Uh, There's no preseason, so they wanted to ease him in. But what? After the first week, especially the second week, where Cousins was forcing the ball to Thielen because there wasn't a whole lot going on um, outside of Thielen, <coughs> why the hell wouldn't you use a guy like Jefferson if that if you, if you were seeing him do stuff like that in practice? Oh, uh, you know, uh, that's why I was not uh, worried about Jefferson. I mean, the first week when we came back with Morning Joe's this year, we we had Wabi on and. We asked him, I said, is that kind of camp talk? And he he didn't completely say that it was or wasn't, you know, even though he wasn't in camp. But, I mean, he knows what the kind of things that they say. And, you know, I, I'd always thought about you yeah, because they were really talking him up in, in a training camp. They were saying Jefferson was having some good days. And you'd see these clips and says, okay, so he's got some natural ability. And it sounds like he's a hard worker. I said, I think he's going to get it, you know, sooner than later. It, um, if they can find the right position for him. So I was I was getting kind of patient with him. That thought, you know, they got to get him going, got it, you know, uh, gradually. And, of course, the first couple of weeks, I think uh, Kirk panicked a little bit and looked for a safety blanket in, uh, in uh, Thielen and uh, found out that they're going to double Thielen and make you beat, him, beat you with uh, Jefferson. And they almost did. They almost did. I mean, he was, he was great. He was catching passes. Um, and, and, and making plays after the catch. He was, he was doing everything you wanted to do. And it looked like he even stretched the field a little bit. I, I'm not sure yet about, about his speed and how accurate of a, a pass route runner he is, but I think he's going to get there. Cause I, you know, it, it sounds like he does study hard and work hard. And, and, uh, now he's got confidence, you know, to go along with, you know, with some achievement that builds confidence and, and, and puts it on tape so that the other teams are maybe going to have to pay a little more attention to him and not just overload on uh, Thielen all the time. Of course, then there's then there's the other safety blanket, and we ha- have to talk about this, that catch by Kyle Rudolph. My oh, good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I mean, it's still at his age to make that one-handed, you know, balletic play in the, in the end zone to get those two feet down. That was something else. That was a thing of beauty, and you know, he, that's not that's a good pass by Cousins putting it to where oh he could get it. But you better have confidence that even he can get it because that thing was at the top of his stretch and at the end of the end zone. Uh, that that was that was something else. That got me up off my my chair on Sunday. That's when I felt something <laughs> odd was going on week two when when there was that throw to him, um, hit him right in the hand and he dropped it. It was one of the the multiple drops that were happening 
right. that week, and it just felt like maybe they weren't prepared or their, their mind wasn't in the game or, or something. But, yeah, Rudolph, I, I just feel like they're, you know, I understand the line's bad and the, and the Cousins isn't playing great, but when, when he has time, there are enough weapons on this offense to make something of it, you would think. No if, question. If Kubiak would call a uh, consistent game, I guess is what – I'm getting at, and I just I was going to say, that was the answer to your question when you asked me who do I blame. You were thinking Kubiak the whole time, weren't you? Uh, definitely. It's just, it's, it's you know, it, you take doubt. I mean, I, they did throw to, to Cook on first down. That didn't work. And then all of a sudden they're, you know, a million yards behind because of that bad snap or whatever. But it just feels like the Vikings of my youth where they, they get away from what's been working the entire game at the last second, whether it's offensively or defensively, they used to go to the pre-event all the time. Um, here it was just a bunch of disjointed crap and they really only needed 20 yards maybe. And, you know, the granted Bailey 20, had, 20, 25. Yep. You know, Bailey missed that one field goal, but he kicked it like six times. So you can't picture him making it. He kept kicking it. They blocked it. They whistled it, you know, they, it was like the, the triple ice mochiato, macchiato. Um, but then I think, you know, with the news that we have of Daniil Hunter potentially returning sometime this season, but maybe not. He might be out for a while. Um, he might be out all season. His, his neck's all messed up. Herniated um, disc. Yeah, that's – yeah, for especially – Oof, that's not a good thing for a guy that you know, uh, utilizes his neck. No. <laughs> um, bars out all season. The offensive line is still a mess. Uh, the defensive line on the interior is bad. Granted, uh, Ngakwe has been looking better and better each week. I said this on Sans <laughs> show yesterday. Like, had they won this game, maybe at the end of the season we would have looked back and, and said they, they should have lost that Titans game for, from a draft perspective. And I'm not one of those people that are like tank for the sake of taking, and obviously Zimmer would never do that. Um, none of these guys would, but what's the point of winning that game? Although I did – I'm not going to lie. There was a, a minute there where I felt like, man, they're beating the Titans. They're 2-0. and They went to the AFC Championship game. Uh they could build on this, you know. They got nobody on defense, really, especially in the secondary. Everybody was hurt. <laughs> Practice squad players are playing, and they're playing with a team like this. Good on Zimmer, but it, it, it was to be as the Vikings things always are. But there is uh, something to be said about a team, um, you know, not winning meaningless games if it means perhaps getting a, a next <laughs> player next season, which is a... <laughs> Well, for me, it was, uh, you know, the first two weeks they got blown out by a very good team and scored a bunch of points in garbage time. The second week, Colts, uh, they got blown out again, embarrassed. Said, okay, this is going to be the worst season. Ever. Well, here they come in with a pretty pretty decent t- Tennessee Titans team. They were in the playoffs last year. And they came out, and like you said, they, they were controlling the game, and they had, they had it going their way until – all of a sudden, the, the bottom fell out in the fourth quarter of the defense, and, and the other team moved up and down the field uh, with ease. But you had the ball in your quarterback's hand yeah. with a minute, minute and a half, over a minute and a half to go. Uh, all of you need is a field goal. The NFL games come down to this all the time, and you have to have uh, – I, I thought, okay, here we go. This is, this is uh, going to be a litmus test. And when they looked – when it was such an abject failure and, and you can't even threaten to win something like that. And you're throwing a, a, a desperation Haymiller pass to end the game. It's like, that's that, that's an even bigger sign to me that this team is not ready for prime time this year. And totally. uh, uh, they are going to have to rebuild if, if I'm not saying they're going to tank, but if, if, you know, from a, from a draft perspective, a loss is not such a, as bad a thing as, as, as it would be when, when you're trying to, uh, to, to make it to the playoffs. So I, I think I just have to temper my expectations, hope to see some good football, see him win a few games and uh, uh, show signs to build on like you're talking about for the future, get some of these younger people, some of the experience they need to be able to, you know, cause there's nothing better than that. And, uh, and look for next year because yeah, boy, um, tough schedule and tough sledding from this point. They're, they're not going to make the playoffs and, and, uh, I'm I'm not sure I'm going to be totally satisfied with a 
another mediocre seven to nine season where they're drafting in the middle and uh, not, not making the splash play at the top of the draft that they really need. But I don't want them to tank, but uh, maybe just lose naturally. <laughs> yeah. Which is a, a very strong possibility. I mean, you're right though. I kind of blocked that part out of my, out of my mind. It's, it's first thing in, in 10 from your 40 <clears throat> and three plays later, you're throwing for a Hail Mary for 24 yards just to get a first down on the 50. Boo. First of all. Second of <laughs> yeah. all, Thielen almost had that. Yeah, he did. He had it. Like, he, he had it, and then he just lost it at, at the last second. For, for a split second, I thought that he had had it. That would have been a very Thielen-esque move. But, I mean, just to put a uh, bow on the on the Jefferson thing, I, uh, I've heard some people saying it was the best rookie debut since Randy Moss, uh, Monday Night Football in 98. And I guess it's hard to argue against that because we haven't had a lot uh, of – Yeah, I wouldn't go games, that far. But why, why do you call it a day? Oh, it's his uh, – this is his debut season because it wasn't his debut game, didn't he? Is this his first start? Uh, it, it may have been his first start, but I think they mean like – because Monday Night Football was like week four in 98 so more of like a coming out party type thing okay oh i got you okay um well, so that uh, he looked he looked amazing i'm not gonna lie yeah. you know and like i said i'll eat all the crow on that i mean it, uh, the way i'm gonna eat crow is the same way that i wrote the article about this last night and it sounds like i'm making a bunch of excuses for myself because i am <laughs> um but i just felt like <coughs> you have the need obviously B.C. Johnson is a possession guy um, at best. I've never been sold on on him. I think people just had such more low, coming. Just kidding. <laughs> had uh, <laughs> such low expectations from like Treadwell that you know B.C. could catch and run a little bit, and people thought he was the second coming. Um, <clears throat> but it just felt odd that this guy wasn't playing when he obviously should be a big part of your game plan. He's the replacement for Diggs, so on and so forth. Um, I've already heard people saying he's better than Diggs, which is no, hyper, hyper, hyperbole until we have a lot more. Uh, Put it, putting Randy Moss in the in the comparison is a little hyperbole too, as far as I'm concerned. But you, that's you know, it was it was it was it was great. It was I saw great. A stat. I saw a stat, and you said something about building on things uh, for the future. The Vikings on Sunday are the first team in NFL history to have a 175 rusher and 175 receiver in the same game. So ever, that's what it said. Wow, yep. NFL history. It's never Bal- been done. Talk about that balanced offense. Exactly. Um, so, and hey. maybe maybe it was the first one. I don't think it said this, but maybe the first team to do that and lose. But I, yeah. I don't. Know. Yeah. I, I that's what I thought I read. So you you wouldn't think you would lose a game like that. Now that you put it that way, no, um, you and they shouldn't have. They had, they were in control. But it also raises the question as to uh, what what are they doing with Dalvin? I know they, you know, I don't know. A lot of people, <coughs> excuse me, are <coughs> cu- uh, ripping on the their choice of how to use Dalvin, and I think it's a little misleading because they just had so many three and outs the last over the first few weeks, so it's not that mm-hmm. you can really feed him the rock and get him going. But Sansevier, um, I think, hates Alexander Madison. He basically says he shouldn't be on the field. You have Dalvin Cook. And my thing is, like, well, maybe they're, you know, trying to keep him fresh. Yes! They don't want him to get injured. You can't give him the ball 35 times. Yes! And he's like, that's what you pay him for. I'm like, well, yeah. But I'm not, oh, imagine, what, yeah, imagine what they'd be saying if that happened. What you just said happened. That he tired out or he got hurt again because of overuse. You know, what yes. What do you think that well, – whose head would that would roll then? Come on. That and, – and it's not as if, as if Madison is bad. Right. You got a, not, a really good backup uh, on, still on a rookie contract. Um, who's going to nope. be gone probably at the end of it? Use him. Use him to 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 extend the life of uh, and career of your star running back. No, I disagree with that. I do too, and he <clears throat> is very Cook esque. Like he's just obviously a step down. Yes. Um, but he he seems he runs in a very similar way. He's uh, catches balls out of the backfield. If there's one thing I would say that they could do more of with Dalvin, it would be. 
Uh, th- <clears throat> throw him the ball more. I, I agree with that. I think he's had five catches in three weeks. That's not good enough. Yeah, and they used him more in that regard last year. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I love – because you're getting him out in space, and he, he's uh, – you know – it, it's a matchup nightmare for some people that are coming to try to take him down. If he can get the ball in space, turn around with a step to, 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 uh, and some momentum on the defensive backs, boy, that's, that's advantage to Alvin as far as I'm concerned. And it's fun to watch. Yeah, it seemed like uh, Cousins had a little bit of trouble uh, <laughs> setting up screens on yeah. <clears throat> Sunday. You know, I want to – you know me. <laughs> Right, like there's, I want to. There's there's some angst in that voice. Well, there, for a minute in that game, I was like, see if he has a little bit of time. I know things need to be, uh, you know, people say things need to be perfect for him to perform. Um, perhaps that's true. I would say that he just needs uh, time and protection, which he doesn't necessarily need perfect receivers. Even though he was forcing it to the only good receiver on the roster mm-hmm. all week last week, um, but. They didn't know they didn't know these injuries were coming, you know, and I understand that. <clears throat> but I said this after they got rid of Josh Klein. I don't understand why they would extend Cousins when they're go- why put all that money <clears throat> into a quarterback like that when you're not going to win in the next couple seasons. It's just, he was the final piece. He's not the starting piece. It's the exact same reason yeah. people said it was a bad idea for him to go to the Jets, which is why he didn't go to the Jets which was they would need to add 11 more guys, and he wanted to come somewhere where he was, you know, the final piece. And I think he's more, more self-aware than people give him credit for. Um, but I will, I will say that, I, and I will also say, there, if there's one person on the, on the team that I don't want to hear from after another loss, it's Cousins, because I'm a little over the the media speak. The There's lots of games left to play, the, whatever his tweet was. We're not where we want to be, but the season's still long, and it's like it's over, man. You know, we've seen enough. We're not dumb. Yeah. Um, Cousins is, uh, uh, you know, you, you've mentioned a lot of the talking points on him that 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 I will agree with, and, and I, I'm not. Uh, Cousins is having a bad season, but he's also being pressured quite a bit, and he doesn't perform comfortably i mean remember go i go back to that sack in the uh, uh packers game he's down in the in the end zone turning around after his deep drop and okay i'm gonna go survey the field like in the back of his mind he's expected to be protected you know yeah and it, it I, I think that's the way he would like to play like aaron Rodgers, who can just fade back look 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 okay there's my guy boom you know where cousins either if, whether it's his head or how he reacts to the pressure, uh, I guess, which is the same thing, that he uh, is never comfortable back there. And he doesn't he doesn't have the time. I'm going to give it to him. I mean, this is probably a smart individual. He, is, he knows how good or not good his line is, and he knows what he's got to do. And um, it's too bad because if you give him the better line, he's, what, the second most accurate passer in NFL yeah. history behind Breeze. I mean, yeah. give him the time, and he can do that. Unfortunately, he doesn't have that time, and uh, he either has to adjust the 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 play calling has to adjust the uh, uh, the scheme on the line, like you were saying earlier, keeping uh, uh, maybe uh, the tight ends in to block to give whatever it takes. You have to give him more time if you want him to to be uh, excel at the, at the uh, not you know the above average, heading towards very good level that you need him to be or the elite level that he should be for a salary. So, um, that, you know, it, it's, we're not, I don't think we're, anything is going to change until he recognizes that he does have a great line, has a great line, recognizes it and relaxes is what I'm trying to say. Isn't it, <clears throat> not to make excuses for the guy, but isn't it a little maddening that the difference between him being abject garbage and the second most accurate kick, uh, passer in league history is just a decent offensive line, and they basically refuse to do it for some reason. I mean, well, there, yeah, there, there are simple things they could do right now <clears throat> to mitigate that. And I keep bringing this up, but if they brought Josh Klein back, Samia is awful. 
Well, that, that's what I want to say. I wanted to say a, a couple sides ago, but I didn't. I'm sorry for interrupting, but Josh Klein's still not in the league. Now, yeah. that's got to say that's got to say something, too, though. He might be available, but that might be one reason why uh, they didn't bring him back, because he wanted more money than they think he was worth or anybody else thinks he's worth. Well, he was under contract, though. Like, they just cut no, him at eight, eight, six you, million in dead cap. Um, they did? Yeah, two saved yeah. $1.4 million, but they took on $6 million in dead cap. And the reason they did that was because they said he wasn't the prototypical offensive lineman they want, which is, you know, someone who can, oh. can get to the second level, which I don't care about the second level if you can't even protect the first level. You know what I mean? Yep, um, I do. And at this point, Samia is getting blown backwards left and right. There's a reason why he was third on the death chart up until recently. And it just seems like willful – they're inflicting pain on themselves willfully when they could just bring this guy back for probably the veteran minimum and, and get some improvement there on the other side of the, the line. Um, that snacks Harrison that played for the lions is still available. He's a big body. You could put in there, but that goes back to the same question. <clears throat> Why bother? You know, at this point, sure. You could win six, seven, eight games in a row, but it's already starting to kind of – we're starting to see the forest through the trees and see which teams are contenders. The Packers are good. Uh, the, Foles the is Vi- playing for the Bears now. It's it's You might as well just ride this season out if you even the get Vi- to play because of COVID. The Vikings are uh, six games out of first place. <laughs> Yikes. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they, behind, they, they behind are. Behind two teams. Behind two teams. Yeah, they're six, I mean, like, out of, they're, they're six games out. So that's my way of agreeing with you. Why bother? Because uh, the, the writing is on the wall. You're not going to get your defensive line back. Ngakwe is going to have to be the man. And you're going to hope to hope he shows, comes back next year after seeing what he's seen. Uh, you got to hope that the, the interior or the, uh, the, the uh, interior of the defensive line improves. They, these young uh, cornerbacks learn and get better. And because next year the cap's going to be even tighter, and uh, you're, you're going to see some, some probably some veterans go uh, with that. So, um, you know, I, I always used to think the Vikings managed their cap well, but it just doesn't seem like they had, you know, they probably have too many of those, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give you some money up front and pay you on the, on the back end kind of things. And, and that's someone that's coming home to roost because, <clears throat> you, know, their, you know, their moves were limited. I, I, like I said last week, it's not Zimmer's fault that uh, uh, Pierce doesn't play um, yeah. and uh, Hunter gets injured. And, you know, put those two guys, and Ngakwe, who's, who's I'm, I'm thinking what maybe he's probably the response to Hunter, but he might have been the response to losing Griffin as well. You put those three on that line, and it's, and it's a much better deal for your, your young cornerbacks and uh, – the rest of your defense, of course, then you lose Anthony Barb. That's that's all things considered. But so you know, it's it's. I, I'm back to why bother. Like you know, I, I hate seeing them lose, but I, I think I'm not going to mind it as much. I'm certainly going to stop picking them in our prediction segment. <laughs> yeah, really, it it comes down to expectation, <laughs> I guess. And any win at this point is just going to bother me. But that's going to be the way it, it's going to go. They're going to probably upset some great teams later in the season and end up with the fifth pick. Um, not that I trust them to take the right person anyway. Uh, I don't know. I just, it, it uh, there's just, so well, I don't know. It sounds like they've took the right person in Justin Jefferson, Joe. Hey, well, even a, what did I put in my article? A broken clock is right twice a day. Oh my, a, a that's broken, uh, G, uh, broken GM is right once every 15 <laughs> years. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy. I, like I said, I, I don't want to be right about a lot of these things because that would mean awful things for the team. And I, he was making all sorts of catches that I, I just was surprised by over the top of guys. Um, not just you out of the, the confidence. There. It totally. was, it was, yeah, it was fun to watch. The first catch he was jarring with, uh, what's his face the the corner and then that dance he did on that touchdown granted that was kind of a broken play he didn't know that though i mean he just yeah. uh, it was just it was really cool to watch and um, now you got gritty dance yeah the gritty. is that what that was that creepy mascot from the flyers 
Uh, no, it came from uh, New Orleans, he said, on Cousins' show last night. He says that it came from uh, home state of New Orleans, and LSU picked it up, and he goes, and now we're bringing it to uh, to uh, the, the NFL. And he says, you know, a few other – he's seen other places do – people do it around the league who went to LSU. So he said, I had to add my own little uh, mark to it. And apparently I, I don't remember it really well, but uh, – uh, Cousins, or I mean, Thielen was looking pretty silly trying to do it. Uh, Justin Jefferson said, "Add me a little work, and so they'll work on that." It's, it's. I mean, that gives us something to look forward to. I guess it's fun to see that sort of stuff. I mean, it just it the, after the first two weeks, it just felt so bleak. It, any sort of improvement, any sort of actual entertainment. They scored um, thirty points in a game that wasn't all garbage time, you know. Yeah, you know, and they there was that big narrative <laughs> of. It's the end of the second quarters that that's been killing this team. Zimmer said, "If not for that, we can't win in the fourth quarter because of what we allowed in the second. And they didn't. They you know they didn't allow that. And they just allowed it in the fourth quarter instead. So they're finding new ways to lose, but they're also improving in areas perhaps some of us didn't think they would. Yeah, uh, you can't you can't have your quarterback coming out of halftime and 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 throwing a pass like that. That should have been a pick six. It was a pick six. That was a terrible terrible call by the oh, ref. The block, the the clowny block." Yes, that that yeah. That, and, I didn't really agree with that either. I, I I wasn't sure how that was a, a block in the back or. But that for that for me is 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 similar to the pass of my my cousins in the Packers game. Either I guess his first season when he had a chance to beat him, and he he throws that pick into double coverage when he could when he's out on the flat, nobody on him, he had all the time in the world, and he tries to force it in there when he could have just on first down and eight at the goal line, he just could have thrown it into the stands. That was one of the worst uh, plays I've ever seen. And this this one is one of those where why if if you knew what to do and what you know you do it, just do it. You can't just he said I should have put that up higher into the stands. Well, of course you should. Come on, Kurt. Yeah, you can't <laughs> if you can't throw it out of bounds. We got a whole other yes. uh, list of issues. Anyway. But the big the big uh, thing floating around on social media that I think is kind of funny. Well, first of all, as everybody uh, by now knows, uh, the Titans have a COVID outbreak. Uh, I think they added one more player to it this morning. Or it's really? Like sometime overnight. Yeah. Um, is it four now and five personnel? Yeah. So nine yeah. total. Um, <clears throat> you know, the Vikings sent out a, a statement essentially saying what you would expect them to last night. They were made aware. They're following protocol. The TCO uh, Performance Center is, uh, you know, quarantined off. Uh, then they basically said, we'll update people on the rest of the week football schedule when appropriate. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how the NFL handles this. I don't know what their protocol is for it. I would assume they have one, even though they're not the type of league to usually think forward like that. It took them forever to come together with that CBA to the point where, like, every star player was going on Instagram being like, what the hell? Like, tell us what's going on. Um but people out there are saying that they don't – assuming there's a game this weekend with the Vikings in it, they don't think it's fair that the Texans get to practice if the Vikings don't, which to me makes absolutely no sense. Why would they not practice? Like I get what they're saying, but that's not how it works. You, know, you, can't, yeah. you can't have two teams go out there flat-footed and have no game plan just because one happened to interact with another. It might yeah. be an, an argument as to why the season shouldn't have happened in the first place. There you uh, go. But outside of that, once you start get going down that rabbit hole of things, if if it gets to the point where, well, if <clears> one, <throat> they get to practice and we don't, then cancel the game maybe. That's, that's uh, you're exactly. Right. I, I agree with you 100. percent It's it's upon it's incumbent upon the Vikings to adjust whatever you know they have to you know they can't practice maybe but they have to install their game plan game game plan their game plan to, uh, uh, to, uh, digitally you know through each other yeah. uh, uh, isolated whatever they have to adjust. You can't say uh, <laughs> that you can't do anything because then people will start doing it in secret or, or whatever, or some silly ass thing like that. It's the same. It's the same thing they face on a different level when, when it comes to fans in the stands. I mean, KC has all, all kinds of people in there and the Vikings had 250 this week, you know, so, and that, that's a competitive advantage. Oh, yeah. well, it's, it's all part of it. And, uh, uh, this is the, 
you, you make a great point. You know, you could make it as whether or not you should have done it in the first place. This is the stuff you probably need to anticipate happening if you say we're going to have a season, and here it is. And anyway, as far as Vikings and Vikings fans are concerned, it's it's kind of gonna it's it's a gonna be a blown up season anyway. So it looks. So I, I guess I wouldn't worry about it. See what happens. I wonder how that might impact tiebreakers if there's a, maybe the Vikings would have to forfeit and not the Texans, but I don't even know what the, if they're a hundred percent sure what the incubation period on this thing is, you know, right. the, the game's in a couple days. Do you risk it? And then what the Titans or the Texans are going to have to quarantine, but then you don't, and then you don't risk, you risk that. And then it just spreads, you know, it's, is there, so, have you seen any talk of them just of not playing the game? Have not, you seen that? Not yet. Um, <laughs> But I would. Uh, it would yeah. make sense, wouldn't it? it? It definitely would. And, and the message they sent out, the PR thing I got in my email, essentially said that you know we're monitoring the situation. We haven't had any positive tests. I don't think they had any positive tests yet again today. But they, they basically <coughs> keep kicking the can down the road and saying we'll update on football uh, football activities when uh, appropriate, which to me means they don't really know what to do. Um, but I, I feel like, you know, it's already Wednesday. So I don't know. First of all, those tests aren't 100%. There's a lot of false positives. So that means right. there's some false negatives. Um, granted, they're going through more tests than the state of North Dakota every single week in the league. But it just seems like a really high, you know, I don't know what the NFL's liability is. I don't know. Maybe when the players signed that CBA, they, they waved away any sort of litigation so they can't feel like they're, or they can't sue for being put in, in a situation that's unsafe. But you would think that for something like this, you'd want to quarantine these teams for at least two weeks. I mean, they're quarantining Robert Pattinson from the new Batman movie and that movie's not going to make $10 billion a year, every single year forever. Uh, you know, they can't afford to have a star player lose a toe or get a, their leg amputated or have their heart be enlarged or whatever. It just seems like a, a legal, a <coughs> legal nightmare. Um, and it's not even flu season yet. <laughs> it's just, this is well, I've already got my flu shot. Um, I gotta get mine, man. I gotta. I, I don't know what to to say about it. This this is this is the COVID meat grinder as far as the NFL concerned. This is this is what you know. I, I talked about earlier. I mean, months ago, I I might even have said it to you. I said I don't know how they're gonna play this season. Yeah. You know, because if you know you can put yourself in a bubble. I mean, you better start now and you know isolate these people for months. And so they are all in a bubble because because if they're good, you're banging on each other and breathing on each other and exchanging droplets such as it is. And uh, it's going to, it's going to spread in a football game, just like it would have spread any other sporting event. I mean, even more so than, than those in, in, who aren't in a bubble because it's uh, I, I, so this is it. This is the, this is the pinnacle of what exactly the league must have feared coming in. And if they don't, if they didn't think about this, and how they would handle it and have uh, a situation rather than more the, so than just, well, let's see what's going to happen. Then that was shame on them. This it's silly. It, it just, that doesn't make any sense. You know, um, you know how this uh, infectious the disease is, you know what your, your players do for a living every Sunday. Exactly. And so you, you, you should have said, okay, this is probably going to happen. <laughs> I mean, you know? look at those weddings that you hear about where, like, 100 people get infected because one infected right. person went. These are teams with 55 guys on them, plus all the coaching and, and support staff in confinement. And there's no tackling at a wedding. <laughs> exactly. And the other thing, people on, um, on Sansevier show yesterday, he was talking about, well, you know, when the Marlins got it, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was a little different, though, because A, it's Baseball. not football. B, it, that was uh, in Florida when it was super humid and it, it, that's why the flu is bad in, in the fall and winter because humidity basically pushes all those droplets down towards the ground. Um, mm. and, and they float better in dry uh, conditions. So, Makes sense. You know, you're going to have that aspect of it too, 
then the flu will come and then they'll probably mutate into something and then it'll be the walking dead by this time next year um i mean who i don't know who, who knows what the hell is going to happen i you know full disclosure i work from home for the most part anyway i was Back before COVID, I was working a couple nights a week at this liquor store in my neighborhood that my mom is the general manager of, but everyone thinks she owns it. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, cool. I don't have to work there anymore, and I can get some lost, uh, like, furlough pay for my lost income and get a month off or something, you know. I don't mind being at home all the time. I got every streaming service ever known to man. I'm, I'm a whole body at this point. But I didn't, expe- good. I, I didn't expect it to be like this. It's odd. It's just like, what? when is this going to end? Do you want to be, well, just put it this way. Would you want to be a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive or defensive line and line up against the Titans next week? Yeah, you know. I, I, I mean, know. it's gonna. Be I don't like, think so. It's going to be <clears> like that um, when Dave Chappelle, uh, uh, Eddie Murphy's brother, talked about playing basketball against Prince and, uh, all the, the members of the revolution were, as he put it, uh, using a lot of fruity picks. And so they, they kind of were like, we're getting all these easy layups because no one wanted to be next to the guys because they, they, it was an insult to their masculinity, basically. And it's the <laughs> same thing. They're just going to have these gaping holes to run through because no one's going to want to – you get one guy on the, the offensive line pretending to cough and it'll be a 100 yards touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all – it's already the subterfuge. It's suddenly it's, it's not it's, just. It's hey, not just... I, 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 can hey, see, I, I can see the Patriots doing it. Uh, <laughs> oh, COVID Gate two thousand. COVID Gate, bubonic <clears throat> Belichick. The second uh, little funny thing about it is, of course, we were all encouraged that the Vikings played that well against the team that went to the AFC Championship. Then we find out that they're stricken with the, a pandemic. <laughs> It's like, oh, no wonder they didn't play very good. And we still lost. Jeez, uh, oh. Louise. <laughs> so, who knows? Uh, it's been a, it's been an interesting season. I think, um, you know, you've been around uh, since really the beginning of this. You and I started working together in 2016. Uh, I started the sites in 2015, but that was the first year. It was like a hobby. Uh, but, you know, neither of us have – through the lens of these sites written about a team that's been bad even it's always been off season of well if they get one or two more guys super bowl and all this excitement i was really really worried about the uh drop off in traffic for a lot of this stuff and i could see why people don't necessarily want to listen to a podcast for an hour but there's a lot of you know when i first sat down with wabi he said that they noticed at vikings.com uh, when the team wins, they, they, people just want to see like video breakdowns. But when they lose, they want to read like ten articles uh, to see who to blame. And there was more traffic after a loss, and I thought that was probably just an anomaly for Vikings.com because they get really hardcore fans there or something. Shh, um, don't tell them. Don't tell them. <laughs> it seems to be the case, though. I mean, people seem very, very invested emotionally as to whose fault it is, why it's their fault, who said what and when. And, uh, and so it'll be an interesting year one way or another. Cause it's a, we're not used to this even under Zimmer. I mean, a lot of, uh, you know, you know, I've never been the biggest fan of Zimmer or Spielman, but, but uh, at points I was like, well, maybe it's just nitpicky sour grape stuff. Like, they're still relatively successful. The game plan works to a point. I don't think they'll ever win a Super Bowl, but but who has? That's a really high standard that clearly can't be overcome in the state of Minnesota outside of uh, late 80s, early 90s uh, baseball and the Lynx every once in a while. Um, point being, I guess that's what we have to look forward to. I don't know. I mean, Well, you know, it goes to say about the, uh, the makeup of – of a maybe an NFL fan, but certainly a Vikings fan. But you know, we all all teams we expect our team to win, and uh, when when they do, that's great. We we all go and and uh, like watch a video breakdown and and and, and watch some film, and because it was good, it's fun to watch again. Yeah. When when they when they lose and they lose like Vikings have the first three weeks, that 
you know, heads are going to roll and people want to know. They want answers because they don't know what, what what's the reason here. Just as you said, that, that makes perfect sense to me. Uh, the, the You'd have, you know, you go to the playoffs and your, your traffic's going to go up. And if they keep winning and, you know, everybody's going to want to see that. But <clears throat> it's always been, you know, go to vent line on either station, you know, and, yeah. and see what happens after a loss versus a win. You know, the, the, uh, the when they win, they just go have another beer. <laughs> they lose they come on vent line and vent while they're having another beer oh. <clears throat> yeah those the, the winning vent lines are always funny because they'll be like uh been waiting half an hour and it's tim and i just wanted to say that i liked that run that dalvin had for that touchdown pretty good okay thank you like it's never the deep we're still at the point though where i think people are drawing these lines and they refuse to admit maybe that they were wrong about certain things. I mean, that's why maybe I overdo it sometimes, but I really like to point out when I'm wrong because I don't think anyone else in Vikings media external of our network ever does that. They just kind of wash their hands of it. And then they pretend like they were the biggest fan of this person from the beginning. And I, I would have thought it would have been kind of gross for me to gloss over the Justin Jefferson thing. Cause as you know, wide receivers are my favorite position group of anything. And I, uh, it was exciting to watch, you know. I just it's it's been so bleak. Mhm. Ah, oh, it was great, great guys. fun to watch. It was just it was he was all over the place, and he's happy. He's the his reactions all day were were anti digs. You know, he had a smile on it. He wasn't all dour as if someone just ran over right. his dog or something. So that's so that's nice. It just would have been a little bit. Uh, I'm a little over these digs was right people just because it's again, we talked about this last week, but when you sign a contract, that contract doesn't guarantee that you're on a contender, nor does getting traded, forcing your way out. You could have been traded to, you know, anywhere. I mean, you could have been traded to the worst team in the yeah. league. So I don't think he's that calculated to where it's like, well, he had this master plan to get to Buffalo. It's just, that's how it happened. <laughs> um, so um, I'm just glad you that know, we don't have to worry about digs anymore. We got some right. else. Uh, think about this for a second. What happens if uh, Cousins moves him into a uh, field goal position and Dan Bailey pounds through a 40, 48 yarder for the win as the clock runs out? What, what kind of readership do we get? Because, you know, there are so many things to uh, uh, oh, be yeah. uh, unhappy about yeah. in that game. And had they pulled it out at the end by the skin of their teeth, do, do those all go away? And yeah, probably I not. I, I don't know. A lot of I told you so's. Like <clears throat> I told you, that they should have been using Jefferson. And I, this is why you use Dalvin Cook more. Blah. You know, it would have been yeah. a lot of like angry happiness, which sounds like every birthday I've ever had. Like just I was right, and look how good the team looks. Because I mean, I I'm not gonna. There were I was on Vikings Twitter, and there were points when it was like 24 to 12 or whatever, and they were moving up and down the field with impunity and people were like, man, this offense looks amazing. And that, <laughs> that's my one defense of cousins is that, yeah, it takes a lot for him to play at that level. Like he needs that offensive line support, but he can do great stuff if you put him in that position. And I just don't understand why knowing that you refuse to put him in that position. It's just dumb, especially when you could get Klein for, for, for dirt cheap. Samia, is not going to cut it. I I don't know why. I'm surprised. And and, and if the argument was is trying that much better last year. Yeah, I mean there were, the the stat that I always go to in the, in the run game especially was the three games he missed. The Delvin Cook it averaged That's two true. point two point five yards, two point five and two point six. And then outside of those games, it was almost five yards to carry. Some games it was six yards to carry. Um, him and O'Neal next to each other, I thought. And then you get. Uh, Bradbury developing I thought that's something you could build on because Klein was only 27 at the time granted he's got concussion problems that might kind of tie into things but they basically said he wasn't good enough at getting out to the second level but how, that might just how, be what they're saying how often do we you know run screens that require that on the right side first of all we've we thrown the ball the two, we three times um, second of all isn't it a, bit, a little more important to, to just do the fundamental things right protect your quarterback, open holes, and then maybe worry about doing all this. You know, I've always just had this sour taste in my mouth about these quote-unquote uh, in-shape offensive linemen because, um, 
that means I'm bigger than an offensive lineman, which is hard for me uh, when I uh, shower in the dark. And and also, uh, I just go back to Matt Khalil, his rookie year being great. Then he got pneumonia, he dropped like 50 pounds. Then all of a sudden, he was on this health kick where he was, you know, in pretty good shape. And he just was never the same guy because he didn't have the the mass to to to, sl- to slow yeah. down, you know, the opposing defensive end and you look at look at the Packers offensive line those guys are just beefy and the Colts year after offensive year line, you know just just do that do you think it's possible that uh, these guys knew what was coming just like anybody else I mean because you said it at uh first week you know if you're surprised by this you aren't paying attention yeah. you know you look at what happened to their defense you know what's coming next year with the you know uh uh the salary cap um you know that uh, the Vikings are going to struggle this year. So what do you do rather than spend bad money to uh, on now, you know, the only problem with Klein is they had him under contract and, and they're still paying dead cap space, but um, you know, to get him now, it wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't change the forces of this, this season that much. Yeah. And um, so, so they're, they're in their mind, they're in rebuilding mode. We've got to get our young players some experience and, um, see who who can play with us going forward, and uh, you know, and see what we need to to fix next year. Because uh, you know, I, I agree with you. What, I don't I don't understand the client thing either. He, he would have been good in that position. I thought back that you know, all we were talking about was cap space, cap space. We got to sign this guy. We got to sign that guy. And and they put a priority on signing Cousins and Cook, and and uh, at the expense of a lot of other people. And so uh, I think they kind of were in building mode rebuilding mode and, and and they certainly see it now so you got to yeah, cut your losses and do what you can and, and go forward i think you're right i mean i this season more than any other i finally conditioned myself <laughs> to say 99 percent of what comes out of the coaching staff or management during camp especially in a camp where we can't really see what the hell's going on because of covid is bullshit right like these glowing things they're saying, you know, every team's going to say that. Camp like you, talk. Yep. Like, yeah. Yep. Like you said, after the first week, um, what are they going to say that we're going to be, we're going to be bad this year. Like they're not going to say that. Um, but I do think that, yeah, they had to have seen this coming. I mean, I think Zimmer knew well enough. I don't, maybe he, he overestimated some of what he could do. Cause it seems like he's been simplifying <clears throat> things more and more. And, and, and he seems a little perturbed about the way things are going with veterans and them not stepping up. He said something about that this week. And, you know, we're not good at anything. Uh, weird things like, uh, what did Parcells uh, tell you? Well, we can't stop or uh, start winning until we stop losing. Like, oh, thanks, <coughs> Bill Parcells. Um, but we're they had, they, yeah, they had to have known this was coming in, in some way, shape, or form. And I, I think there are um, – some other moves are going to make that are going to be easier if, if the season is a mess, uh, a la Anthony Barr. Um, you know, a lot of people think he won't be back. Who knows? Uh, this could be a, a multi-year rebuild, but which I'll be, compl- I'll be on board with, with it. You know, I, especially if we can get uh, like a, a really good quarterback next year in the draft, but you know what I'm going to say. It just felt, it just feels like they keep making the same mistakes and the, ignoring the interior of the offensive line, so on and so yep. forth. I mean, Brian O'Neill is a superstar. <clears throat> Garrett Bradbury is looking better. And then you got uh, Riley Reef is mediocre. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to find two guards to play. You don't need to even use a third round pick on any of these guys. I mean, don't you think they should them. take that, uh, the top, uh, left tackle that's in the draft if they get down there that low because you know they're never going to get the first pick that just doesn't happen so uh, yes, yeah. d- definitely um if they end up like what at two or two three or whatever yeah um yeah and and then what they should do though is convert him to guard i'm kidding but that would be the most vikings thing ever um because <clears throat> who knows what they're gonna do with ezra Cl- cleveland now um Right. But he's got, you know, they're not going to get rid of him because they just drafted him and they, they got people need time to develop. And certainly that's the way Zimmer handles rookies. He doesn't play them a lot unless he has to and uh, uh, give them time to gel, develop into the league. And this is 
this is, you know, you can't throw away this season and say this was a non-season because of COVID, but it is kind of. It's like, you know, uh, the Vikings are going to not do well this year, not going to make the playoffs. So you got to, at some point, temper your expectations and, you know, uh, look for bright spots like you were, you were doing with the agenda stuff you can build on and look 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 ahead, you know, and just uh, make sure that, uh, um, well, you enjoy watching them, but don't expect them to win every game so yeah it's uh, which is an understatement at least it looks like there'll be some fun stuff to watch the first those first oh, games yeah. were just so awful that it was it was it was unwatchable football yeah um you know i i can go through a season of watching things to build on jefferson maybe get a third guy in there i mean you have only bc you have bc johnson he could be a, a, a decent third guy um you know i want to see more verse with junior though that's my one my one complaint because he's supposed to be the big breakout star this season, and I, I feel like they haven't used him very much. But I wrote about that, this uh, fallacy of the, the two tight end set with Kubiak. He runs a lot of two tight end sets. He runs three tight end sets, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he distributes the ball equally between those two people. Um, I thought we'd get more Irv Smith just because he tends to go to the tight end that can block and catch, not just catch. But when you have a guy like Kyle Rudolph who catches 80% of the ball thrown his way and he doesn't – in the red zone or in the end zone like that, it's hard not to toss him the box, man. Is he still, he's still got some gas in the tank. Uh, Absolutely. So, so assuming there's a game this weekend, how did, I was up by 17 points last week. Did I lose again? You did. You did. Uh, I had, I was off by 13 and you're off by 20. You had, you had the 34, 13. So you, you underestimated the, the Vikings by 17 oh, points. I was yeah, close that's... on the, on the Titans. Oh yeah. Too much faith. Damn you. Justin we're, Jefferson. We were both the same on the Titans. I had them at 28. So we were both three off on them, but uh, I had the Vikings for 20. So I was a total of 13 off and you were a total of 20 off. So a net seven. So I picked up seven. I'm still down by 10. So that means I go first since I won. And, um, you know, uh, this, this, the, the Texans are 0-3. Wow. The Texans are 0-3, and, but so are the Vikings. The Texans are 0-3 to teams such as the Baltimore Ravens, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Kansas City Chiefs. There's a That's good a reason why they're 0-3. That's yes. a rough schedule. So, uh, you know, when, it, when you're going to play an 0-3 team, you think you should be, be okay. But, unfortunately, this is – 2020, so nothing is for certain. And uh, the, the you know that I think the, the the Texans don't have a very good pass defense, and I think that will bode well. But uh, they give up a lot of yards overall. Um, they only score 19 points. I'm going to give them the Texans to win at 28, 23 because I think they're a better team than their record shows, and. The Vikings about are about where their their record is pretty much spot on. So, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go high, even though it's been killing me. Uh, it's gonna. I would say 38 to 23. Vikings are gonna lose. They just yeah. Okay, so we have we have 10 points at play then, since yeah, we're both the, at 23. So yeah, that, so if you win, we'll be even. Which, if they can w- win all those points, yes, it could. They could be split down the middle. It could be, you know, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, well, probably. Uh, <laughs> Buck up, laddie. Oh man, like I you said, a, like you said during, during a losing season, uh, uh, you get more traffic, and I don't think that's going to change anytime twic- quick. I mean, when when the season is finally over. You know, it's not yet when it finally is or looks to be, I suppose, then you, you, you lose a little bit of people who who move on. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't think anybody's going away this year as far as viewership because this uh, this, this season is so bizarre. Yeah, you know? it really is. So I got to get our uh, social media app off the ground, uh, which should happen this next month because I feel like we, we'd be making, <laughs> be making a killing in the like message board user group chat room area of people just going crazy. Um, so people stay tuned for that. Cause I, uh, finally got approved for a loan. I just have to dig up a bunch of documents and prove that I, you know, I'm 
didn't sneak in here from Canada despite my cadence. Um, uh, but yeah, definitely check out manscaped.com. Uh, they were nice enough to send us a whole bunch of stuff. Um, most of which is, uh, there's, uh, you know what? I'll do an unboxing video, uh, on our YouTube channel. I'll show everybody what came in the box, what they, I'm not going to show like the, as Joe knows, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go from point A to point B. People can use their imaginations, but there's some interesting things in there that, uh, that apparently a discerning young man needs. And by discerning, I mean, um, sweaty. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if, uh, uh, Manscaped appreciates this, but I, I used the uh, trimmer on my beard yesterday and it was really kind of nice. Actually, it's, it's uh, precise and it's, uh, gets the job done. I can't imagine where, how it would be elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I, I'm not the, I, my facial hair game is, is sub 13 year old boy, but, um, <laughs> that trimmer is nice. And they gave us like every attachment known to man, which I appreciate as well. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, when I do my next video, I'll rock the shirt and I'll show everybody what came with it. A little, I really want that straight razor though that they showed that old school like single blade, not really a straight mm -hmm. razor, but a single blade shaver. And then I hear that cologne's amazing, but I get 20% off. Hey, maybe I'll order it. Uh, go to manscaped.com and uh, use the promo code Morning Joe's, all one word, get 20% off. And uh, stay tuned for that video. I'll show you guys some of the stuff that we got, what it looks like, uh, so on and so forth. And we will be back next Wednesday at 9.30, rain or shine. This has been Morning Joe's for the 30th of November 2020. September. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what did I say? November? September. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's still <laughs> September. Let's go to school.